Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Comlink. Comlink, if you're unaware, is our weekly podcast conversation type thing where we take something from Star Citizen and we talk about it. We talk about it with chat. We bring some of chat into the conversation. We talk to you guys with your comments and whatnot. And we uh, sit with a fancy drink. The fancy drink of my choice today is a, uh, a, a pink energy drink. Because I am very tired. Actually, not that great. It's like a watermelon flavor. I'm actually kind of not a fan of it. Anyway, today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, is esports in Star Citizen. So, we had the fight or flight over the weekend. I got to commentate it. It was my first time commentating a large event like that. You know, they had like 600 viewers while I was commentating and stuff. So, it was really, really cool stuff. And it was very fun to be a part of. And over the last couple of months, I've had this sort of resurgence into wanting to get into esports years and years and years ago um back when like starcraft 2 esports was like at its peak i used to love watching that and i didn't even play that game right? because there is something very very cool about a lot of esports and a lot of the the you know community interaction and a lot of the uh viewer interaction and stuff it's it's awesome it's it's not really like any other sport at least that that i feel so it got me sort of thinking this past weekend about sort of the future of esports, um, the current state of esports, and obviously all specifically in regards to Star Citizen. So, sort of firstly, the thing that sort of I was thinking was like, I, so many people have different ideas about how Star Citizen should be in the future, what features should be implemented, how they should be implemented and whatnot. And so I was kind of thinking, is this even a thing that we want to be heavily put into this game? Now, from my perspective, yes, right? I love it. I love the idea of esports itself. And I think the game of Star Citizen lends itself really well to doing some racing esports and some dogfighting esports. Anything ground-based might be a bit rough because in the vast majority of cases, other games are going to do it better. Like there's no way that Star Citizen will ever be able to compete with, with Counter-Strike or, or Valorant or even any of the Battle Royales, even though as an actual like, you know, tournament esport, those aren't necessarily as popular. Uh, Counter-Strike and Valorant like super, super are, right? So, but for the dogfighting, there's not really any game I think that could pull off like an audience interaction like Star Citizen could. And uh, similar to flying racing as well. I don't think there's any other game that could could pull off like these really interesting space racy type stuff. Now there's other stuff to be brought into it as well, which is that Star Citizen has this really unique ability to have the opportunity to run these within the persistent universe. Like, imagine if you were playing, let's say, World of Warcraft, and you had, you know, your arena tournaments, right? Like, you had your old school arena tournaments, but instead of them actually being separated from people, they were just doing it out the front of Stormwind, and you were able to actually have people stand right there, right next to the contestants, and watch. Like, you're watching from in-game, sure, but you're still right there. You're basically able to have a, like almost stadium environment but within the game itself and you sort of think about well like already i think that's an awesome idea right and that's the the fact that star citizen can do that is fantastic and then you can bring into that sort of something that we were mentioning before this before comlink which is that you could introduce things like dynamic events that are actually run by cig about you know well the daymar rally is about to happen you know, the, the largest event in the game at the moment. And so because of that, well, realistically, lore-wise, you'd need to get some fuel stock down there. You'd probably need some metal materials and some salvage materials to get down there. So for the week leading up to it, you know, there's all these fluctuations in prices and all this extra demand from these locations uh, on Daymar as people rush to, to fill those orders. And then everything else that can that can run from that. And I don't think we'll, we, we see much of that in any other game the only thing that's kind of closest is is eve online 
But all of the situations where that happened, it's not about the sport of the game. It's it's like literally, you know, involved in wars and stuff where that happens. So I don't know. I think I think that that part's a pretty interesting thing. So when we come to esports, especially in a game like Star Citizen, there's a couple of things to consider. One, right now, the game is in a state where we can have very limited, uh, but arguably interesting ways to actually have these events. I mean, we've had successful events like this already, right? So we've had Fight or Flight, which I think is the most uh, viewed PvP event in Star Citizen so far um, in, in, in terms of all the fights or, uh, Fight or Flights. Someone might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's correct. But we have the Daymar Rally, which is a super, super popular event. We're having these communities build up for, for racing like SCR to GG and XGR that are doing a really, really good job, you know, implementing large racing events that are that, like by all standards i think all of these events sort of count as their own esport um and they're able to do a pretty decent job can considering how the game's working out right now but we get into another issue of is it sustainable would this still be popular in the future would any of these events like start to fall off like one thing um, that always sort of gets to me that, that I quote to people every now and then is racing is actually one of the least popular, if not the least popular uh, career choices for Star Citizen uh, in terms of anytime people are talking about features, uh, racing is always at the bottom every single time, which means while it's, while it's a number that I hope will get better as the game progresses, and I mean, like even in 3.18, we're about to get some racetracks with official times and official leaderboards, basically. Uh, it, it is concerning that it's at the bottom, right? Because the racing stuff is probably the most integrated sort of part of esports. You know what I mean? It, it, it's the most... It's the... It, it's the... I'm trying to think of the word. It's, it's, it's probably got the most integrity. Of, of anything in Star Citizen right now that could be considered esports because it's all sort of just time trials for the most part and any of the uh, actual like team races, desync doesn't have too much of an impact a lot of the time. And then the only large issue that comes up right now for that uh, is like 30Ks. And, and in those situations, obviously that sucks, but it, I think uh, we're getting to a point where the community is getting trusted a little bit more in these situations, so they're able to restart these events pretty quickly. Um, no, so CRG aren't supporting a Star Citizen esports league, but esports, I think, needs to be part of the conversation of development of the game going forward and how much time uh, CRG should put towards, you know, esports getting an amount of uh, dev time, if you know what I mean. And that's kind of what I want to discuss because I want to see what you guys think of esports and Star Citizen at all, what you think of Atmo, what you think of XGR, what you think of any of these like PvP events that get put on, whether you'd like to see more of it, whether you'd like to see more support from CRG towards these events uh, in terms of, you know, actually creating tools for them to use uh, or which the, the other side, which I think is a legitimate argument, do you want Star Citizen to be more of a simulator? Do you, do you want to be a bit more disconnected from that? Um, because, yeah, I think there's so many different ways that you could you could put this out there. And and, and for my part, I, I really, really want esports to be a part of Star Citizen. And yeah. So that's sort of my big thing. Um, yeah. Of course, yeah, of course, aimless. Obviously, we, we, we are in, in early stages for that sort of th uh, sort of stuff, but that's what I'm talking about. What would, where would you like to see CRG go with this, right? Because the PvP events are doing really well in terms of viewership. And when we're talking about esports, as much as I love the community, it, it really is about viewership. Uh, that, that is what determines whether an esport is going to be successful or not. It's, that's literally just how it goes. Ink40, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. And the PvP events are doing really well. Uh, you know, Daymar Rally does really, really well every year. But you could argue that that's 
not necessarily eSport as much as it is just like a cool, fun, large event. But I think you're going to see more of these events uh, going forward, right? Like Miss Gabby's ran a uh, 2v2 event a couple of months ago that was also very, very successful. So is there potential for, for more of this stuff in the future? Um, where could it possibly go to? And how much time should CRG at all put, put into it, you know? Um, so yeah. Haven't they already stated that SC is an emulator, but does that exclude esports? Not in my opinion, just my five cents. Yeah, so when, when I use the term simulator, I'm thinking of it in terms of like Microsoft Flight Sim and stuff. When CRG sees simulator, I don't think it's an actual sim. Like it, it is a game. Star Citizen is a video game. It is a game. It has gaming mechanics. All of that makes sense. You know what I mean? So uh, I think that's very important to, to remember. Um, is just because CRG Call of Duty Simulator doesn't mean that esports can't be a part of that. But what role should they have? Especially because with the sort of way that we live in, in all video games right now, uh, esports is a huge part of marketing. And, uh, you, know, you know, getting new people on board, even extremely casual players. And I was thinking about this. Uh, League of Legends. Of course, we're going to mention League of Legends. You know, it's the biggest esport in the world. So it might not be the perfect analogy, but League of Legends, even like the most casual player that might put in a couple of hours a, uh, a week, they know who Faker is. They know who TSM, uh, to, who TSM are, right? You guys might not, but... but <laughs> The, 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 even the most casual League of Legends player knows who those people are, right? Um, and that adds to the whole experience of that game. So there's obviously massive opportunities there of if you are able to make a solid set of tools uh, and you are and you do put some dev time in towards giving those tools to the players to make these really cool events, uh, then you're in a good spot, you know? The more it can be embedded and immersive in the verse, the better, in my opinion. Anything to escape from the inevitable connotations of reputation of most real life esports. Fair. It's real hassle in Star Citizen and getting everyone grouped up to do some kind of event and keeping trolls out of the game from interrupting the event you are trying to have. Um, I, okay, I, I don't actually necessarily agree. For, I mean, I've organized a couple of tournaments and events in Star Citizen and it has felt a lot easier over time to get people together and and get people to actually want to participate in these events in fact the easiest event that i've been a part of in in any capacity so far has been time trial masters and a lot of that was because there was a lot of trust in the players that were participating um that they would you know obey the rules and whatnot and and they did right the players obeyed the rules we didn't have any issues with trolls we didn't have any issues with with people trying to mess up with the event. And that is a thing you have to consider. And it is a thing that uh, an organization like Ammo Esports do consider. They, you know, they have basically mercenary teams, security teams, making sure that nothing uh, terrible happens to them. But also within that, there, there's not necessarily a reason why for large, in the future, for, for large esporty or, or a type of events that CRG run or that uh, community members run, that there can't be a tool to help mitigate that you know possibly a an armistice zone or a or a whatever not, not 100 sure obviously also n not necessarily all of these events have to be run in the pu but having access to the pu and being able to run these events in the pu creates a really unique situation that like i said you don't really get in any other game um where you can actually spectate in game with your avatar there you know so um that makes it a a, a much a much cooler experience i think it uh, feels like CRG would definitely have to support esports for it to work. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. But it's this is it's sort of a question to you guys. Like, do you want CRG to do this? Do you want CRG to spend some back end time, you know, assisting with this? Because because uh, right now CRG do a great job at, at assisting with all of these types of events in terms of community engagement, and you know they help with prizes and stuff. But it really is about the tools. Um, one thing I noticed during Fight or Flight is that it was really, really hard to get a sort of gauge on, you know, what what sort of health every vehicle was at, you know, how many bullets each weapon had or whatever, um, where their shields were at without like being very meticulous and like looking at each one, you know? So 
Um, that's sort of that's sort of part of the thing I'm talking about. Esports, you would think a large amount of people would be watching your event. In esports, they have special servers and stuff others can't access to make sure the event goes smoothly. Yeah, for sure. Which is why I'm saying like, it's not to discount using something like Arena Commander for these types of events. Uh, it's just you know that I think there is that unique opportunity which which has been used so far of being able to have spectators literally be there as a part of the event without physically being um, at the location, which is just kind of a cool, interesting thing. The second part is uh, kind of, uh, I think, I think the larger and more important thing. So, like I said, esports really live or die on on viewership for the most part. You still have large uh, communities that will continue to do these sort of things. Like, I don't think XGR are ever going to give up, uh, you know, doing stuff like the Stanton Cup because they really enjoy doing it. The race is really enjoying being a part of it. I don't think Atmo will ever give up doing stuff like Damar Rally because same thing. They they really enjoy being. Uh, sort of doing this for the community and whatnot but for in order for CIG to want to uh, support it further then it, it does become about viewership and driving numbers into the community and for that it becomes is it entertaining enough so we all well most of us in this chat I think love Star Citizen <laughs> So we are we are all very biased in terms of what we enjoy watching and, and and understanding the game and whatnot. And so we get to a sort of point of how do you make something like 2v2 dogfighting, which I think is one of the best formats that we've had for any of these kinds of things so far in the game. How do you make 2v2 dogfighting entertaining uh, for a viewer who's never played Star Citizen? And I feel like it would be a bit hard. It's not, it's, yeah, it's, it's not, because you're on a 3D plane, you get into this weird issue of it's really, really hard to keep track of what's going on from a viewer perspective. Whereas when you're watching something like Valorant or CSGO or League or whatever, it's all 2D plane, right? The only movements are up, down, left, right. That's the only places they're going. It makes it very easy to track everyone. And so you also sort of get into the issue of like, well, do I want to watch from the perspective of the pilots? Do I want to watch from the perspective of someone viewing the the pilots? And uh, yeah, it gets a bit iffy because you you do want that production style to to get better. No, it'd be cool if you can watch esport matches in the PU on like TVs or screens posted in some pace uh, some spaces. Yeah, they've mentioned that a couple of times actually, and I really do hope that eventually. Uh, something like that comes into the game through the use of the Reliant, I want to say Mako, whichever one the uh, the media the media <laughs> Reliant is, um, being able to broadcast to other it, its camera feed to like other vehicles would be really really cool, and then that would just lend itself as well to like yeah cool it can do esports or it can do I'm gonna watch the jump point so you can see if any bad guys come in that sort of thing you know so it has it has tons of uses if that if that's possible. And yeah, that'd be that'd be a nice way way to do that. So yeah, that's the that's the sort of thing. At the very least, I think definitely the future of this sort of stuff, the future of the esports stuff, I think it is going to lend itself more towards the dogfighting than uh, necessarily any part of the other part of the game. I'd love for you know competitive space mining to be a thing but it will be boring <laughs> like it'll be very very boring to watch i'm sorry so i don't think that that's necessarily necessarily realistic um like any sort of industry stuff i don't think is necessarily realistic there uh so i think i think dog fighting is going to be the big thing also yeah and like i said yeah the the FPS mechanics are, are solid enough for the game to, you know, for them, for them to work and for them to be interesting to play with, but I don't think they're interesting enough to to watch. But there is something to be said about the possibility of uh, multiple multiple aspect gameplay. I, I can't think of what to say, or what to call it, where there's multiple objectives 
on each sort of section where you've got to start off on ground, move to ground vehicle, move to flying vehicle. There is a possibility that something like that could be interesting. But also for the most part, I think you want to keep esports as simple as possible. So you do just go, all right, we are dog fighting today. That's what's happening, right? Once Star Citizen has gone to full release, I haven't got a problem with the esports side getting expanded. While still in alpha, I don't want resources taken away from the main development of the game and any esports feature creep to muddy the development. That's fair. Yeah. That's that's sort of yeah. I, I I expect I yeah I expect the opinion to basically be one or the other. I doubt many people are going to be in in a little of a gray area. It's either you know do they do they expand it now in the hope that the esports scene is able to continue expanding, or do they leave it for later um, at the possible risk of it not being as relevant? You know. And yeah, it's sort of sort of where we're at yeah that's normally like a 10 minute section when i start this off but i guess i had more to say about it than i realized so the next bit comes in oh. so at my esports do an amazing job xgr do an amazing job right these guys host some really good events some of the individual events that uh, some content creators have, have posted up have been great. Except for that Cronty guy, his events suck. Um, so the question becomes, when is CRG going to run an event at all? I, I think it'll probably be sooner rather than later. Because while it won't... Like, the, the events themselves can be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we were sort of talking about is more of like the actual like hardcore competitive stuff. But I think, yeah, it, it, it's only a matter of time before CRG host an event themselves, uh, whether that be ground racing or ship racing or dog fighting or whatever it is. I mean, think about it once again. You sort of have this situation of uh, org, like orgs will run events forever. It's the way that it's worked in every esport forever is that you will have you will have organizations running events. Uh, but you also get the developer running events every now and then. Uh, you know, like World of Warcraft will run the, the Arena Championships at BlizzCon, you know. Or, uh, you know, League will actually run Worlds or the, uh, what was it, the Dota 2 Championship, right, I believe was actually held by the developers. The the one that had the, ama like, 42 million prize pool or something, something crazy. So, um... Yeah, the question is, will CRG do something like that soon? And, and exactly what you're saying, Amos, is right. They have done the odd time trial. They've shown that a lot of devs, uh, devs were, uh, you know, they're very interested in racing in Star Citizen. They've been working towards stuff. Uh, Jared said a couple of times on some ISCs and some SELs, you know, they they always watch things like uh, Daymar Rally and they and they watch Crocs Cup and whatnot. So. I mean, when do they when do they hold an event? I thought you were wearing a tinfoil hat on the stream thumbnail. <laughs> it has gone very far past the back of my head. One sec. But those games have like an in-game ranking ELO system to see which players make it to the large event. And that's yeah, that's that's totally fair, Cavion. And I would say, yeah, like Star Citizen doesn't have that until 318. Because being introduced in 318 is these leaderboards for racing. They, they literally are, right? So you can actually invite, you, you will be able to invite world record holders certified by Star Citizen, right? So they, they do have that avenue open to them. Um, and yeah, that's that's 100% possible, right? So had a CRG time trial on Microtech and one on RSN. Yeah, and, and now those time trials are literally getting added into the game in 318. They're actually going to be a, a uh, core part of of gameplay. People are going to be making UEC doing racing. I also understand ship racing is already part of the game lore, Grimhex uh, racing viewing platform and uh, jump point lore stories. Yeah, exactly it is. Uh, it, it's always been intended that they wanted racing to be a thing in the game and it's racing for this past year has been in this really like golden age and we've been seeing more features being added for racing which is also kind of what's spurring on this conversation for me is that CRG are 
showing an awareness of competitive gameplay and they are adding things in for those players that are being competitive. Once again, I still think that um, uh, the dogfighting PvP is sort of the way of the future for, for Star Citizen for these types of events. But racing will, will always be a thing and, and they're acknowledging that. Sup, bunch of numbers, Aiden. So I don't have enough stable ping to race at all uh, without any bullshit. So possibly, that's the thing. So we still haven't, we obviously haven't gotten into 318 yet and we haven't seen how accurate these timers are going to be. What I'm hoping is that it uses a local timer and then sends that to, uh, like sends that to the game, if you know what I mean, rather than using the server tick. Because if it uses the server tick, then yeah, I think there's a lot more chances of there being uh, cheating or, or, or abuse of the system or something. But if, if it's using your local, you know, computer tech or whatever to actually do those times, then uh, that, that'll bring a lot more integrity into it. Otherwise, uh, for at least the time being, until they fix that, people will still use SCR.gg uh, to get your official times in there. So, uh, In guitar, thank you very much for the follow. The fighting shooting game seems to be more popular esports games rather than racing. I agree about dogfighting, yeah. And, and like I said, it, I don't think there's any really, I don't think there's any dogfighting uh, sort of like competitiveness that exists in the larger scope of esports that is necessarily entertaining. I think Star Citizen already, even, even like we're still waiting on master mode changes and stuff. I think Star Citizen still has some of the most entertaining ways of doing that. Um, and obviously, you know, Sort of something that came up during Fight or Flight is people talking about, you know, the meta of PvP uh, and how that would impact events like this without really considering that, you know, when, when like Atmo bring in, all right, so these are the rules for this event. You can only use these vehicles with these loadouts. That's actually, like, like that is a normal way to host a tournament. And then you're like, yeah, that, that whatever those rules are will end up having a meta. But it means you don't have to worry as much about balancing. One thing I'm hoping for in the future uh, that's, that someone will inevitably do is having a, an open style tournament with a point system. So let's say we're organizing a 3v3 dogfighting uh, type of tournament. And I say each team gets 100 points to play with. Right, and so so there's a bunch of like let's say during the time where this three v three is happening, the gladius uh, is hitting as hard as a hammerhead. Like it might as well just have twelve, uh, sixteen size fours, right? Whatever, like insanely, insanely OP. Well, okay, in that situation, you actually have, and this happens in tons of games. You actually have a list of like, well, if you're using this, you've used this many points. If you're using this, you've used this many points. So in that amount of, in that hundred points that you get to use for your three ships that you want to bring, the Gladius is worth 80, right? And so you're trying to disincentivize people from using that, but not so much that it becomes unplayable. And that becomes a really, really good way to, to skirt these metas and make these uh, competitions really interesting and allowing people to still choose what they want to do within reason. You know, so um, I think that'll inevitably happen. It, it, so, someone's going to do it. And, and the biggest thing is you just need to do it. it, it it's usually a community driven points list, right? Is you work together with the community to make that list, which is basically once again, yeah, it's like there's always going to be balance issues because it's a video game. Every multiplayer video game has balance issues. Some people don't understand that for some reason and think that everything can be perfectly balanced. They can't. Uh, but then you, you can skirt some of that, some of those balancing issues and make it even tighter by having like a points list. Literally everything since the game's intervention has been server side. They need server meshing uh, for the game to work online at all. My point is CIG can't make the game work. Esports are like 10 years from now. Ideas, racing would need to be very exclusive, possibly within an org or an org sized unit. Uh, they even had training missions in 1.7 that was just you and two gladiuses and some NPC van on an uh, otherwise empty map, and that was server side before they even had PU. See, you say that, but it's already started. OED. Like, people want to participate in these events now, and they are. So, like, like that, that's why I think it's, it's worth having the discussion now, because we're seeing some of these events being run to a fair amount of success. And I would also, like, one of the things I want to mention too, so 
We had, yeah, we had Fight or Flight on the weekend. The amount of speed that they've been able to start each of these new matchups with now in the PU, <laughs> right, is way faster than it was two years ago. And it will be way faster again, you know, next year and way faster again than the year following. We did 15 matches, including a 30K, right, in eight hours. And some of those matches lasted longer than 10 minutes. So in, in the grand scheme of Star Citizen, that's pretty wild. And that's for an event, like, like racing events, XGR were able to do, I think it was 12 races in three hours during one of the Stanton Cups. It was 10, it was 10 or 12 races in about three hours. So a, a lot of the sort of concerns that we have in terms of at least that aspect is getting a bit removed. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Good thing there'll be no matter in SE. Yeah, no matter, no matter. Oh yeah, they want. It's an awesome idea, but the amount of game-specific blockers that I've seen from units like Ammo Esports was astounding. Plus, you get players to organize anything within a sample size of 100, 200, and barely anybody knows each other's. They get management problems out the ass. I disagree. Everything I've seen from the last about six months or so, like, yes, those issues were definitely a thing previously, but everything I've seen within the last six months has shown that events are significantly easier to organize and get together now than they, than they have been ever, and, and it works. So with patch issues with standing. <laughs> so that's also important. Obviously there are always patch issues. But once again, OED, yeah, it's, it's, it's not necessarily about right now. It's just there is a lot of hype right now for it, right? And it is starting to build. So I think the conversation is worth having now of, uh, like I've sort of been saying, do you dedicate uh, some resources towards it? Um, or how do orgs, like Atmo and, and, and XGR, how do they compensate for, for changes that are coming up and how do they push it to push these things further? It's it's more the broad the broad uh, broader aspect. Like I don't think we'll be having full proper like insane competitive gameplay yet until like maybe maybe seven or eight years from now. But uh, it all comes from somewhere, right? The game is in a playable-ish state right now. People are inevitably going to try to do these things. And the earlier that you get in on it, the better you can make it from when it's in a state that, uh, I mean, it plays better, you know? Really miss the events Rexilla used to have with ground-based combat events. I think a lot of people really enjoyed seeing those also. Yeah, for sure. So I actually have, I've, I've never watched Rexilla, but I've uh, been uh, told about told about them quite a few times. Uh, because we we used to run a couple of uh, ground-based combat events and stuff as well, right? And um, there is, I think, sort of ba based on the events that I've been told that Rexilla do uh, has done, there is a space, I think, for some organized with prizes type events for ground ground combat. But it's it's very interesting because the ground combat is very. It's, it's not tuned as high as many other things. And so it's hard to make that as interesting. You know what I mean? There was a possibility with Theaters of War that that could have been the case, but I, I don't really think that's the case anymore. That it could be, uh, be at any sort of high level. Hype towards it is being built because the devs are putting those new places and features into the otherwise well-explored universe. People want to do something they never did because what else to do on a Friday evening when you're a solo? I actually think it's the other way around, OED. The reason that they are putting those in is because of the hype that has been brought up from Atmo and XGR. It's not... C CRG aren't creating the hype, they're expanding upon it. You know, and, and they're delivering these resources to some very dedicated but small communities at the moment. Uh, because you know, well, I mean, they they themselves are fan of race, are fans of racing, and uh, they want to support the community, and they think it's worth their time. And if they think it's worth their time to to add in those locations just for racing, then maybe we'll see some other stuff for for some other possibilities. One thing that I think that's really also got me onto this conversation is just the idea that 
This weekend had a cash prize. And once you start getting into the realm of cash prizes for events in, in games like this, then you are starting to get into like an arguable, legitimate esport territory. And it wasn't, it was nothing to shake at. First prize was, uh, I believe, $500. Um, pl plus a bunch of other stuff. Like there was ships, there was, you know, a Toby, there was Thrustmasters from, from like the sponsors and stuff. And these events are getting sponsored too. That's the other thing, right? They, they have actual sponsors. So I, I think it's hard to deny that these events, despite what Christian said during Fight or Flight, it's hard to deny that these events don't have some sort of competitive integrity or need to have some sort of competitive integrity. Uh, at least enough to make people want to do these. At the same time, uh, there's no entry cost to these events as well, right? Uh, and I'm sure eventually there will be. I mean, some of you might know, I, I spent about five years working um, at, at, a, at a board game store. And one of the biggest things I had to do was tournament organization. I had to run some large tournaments. I was part of uh, running a couple of uh, Magic the Gathering Grand Prix as well. Uh, and so all of that, you know, that's that's sort of part of the world that I'd understand in, in tournament organization. And, you know, actually when, when you do start having hey, it's going to cost you 20 bucks to enter this event and that goes into prize pool. Then it starts getting really heavy. And I think we're just, we're getting very close before we see that first event, you know? And we're very, very close. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you say esports territory, but esports have scale as well. I participated in OSU national championships twice, and the biggest cash prize was fifty dollars, and they were officially recognized by the game's dev. You know, one hundred percent. But like, of course, they have scale. And what I'm saying is a thousand dollar, a, a one thousand dollar prize point where the event has been sponsored by large companies means that like like what you were saying of this being a thing ten years down the road to talk about. I I. That I'm saying no, we, we should talk about this now and we should see how the community feels and how the community wants to move forward or if they don't want to move forward. That's that's the thing as well. And like I said, I think we're in a very, very close spot where we are having tournaments that are that are solid, that are fun, right? Um So yeah, I think that's um for the most part. I think that's all my discussion points. Does anyone in chat want to uh, want to hop onto the comlink stage and and have a chat or no? Up to you. Comlink music always a banger. You haven't even been here for the combo. Oh, it's all right, Muffin. We just spent, we spent like, what, 50 minutes saying that you're the worst player in Star Citizen for the most part. I think that's what we got, right, chat? I think that's where we, I think that's where we, uh, where we finished off there. <laughs> you allowed your two cents? You want, you want on the, on the screen? Just in chat? Alright, no worries. Give us your give us your lowdown. Don't feel strongly about esports either, either way. I think it's just I think it's a really, really good avenue to to not only promote the game, but also just to just to have fun, right? Like there's something inherit of, in, inherently fun for a lot of players about being competitive and and versing people who are being competitive and getting better and whatnot and you know, it also, it applies to things that aren't just PvP, right? You can, it, it can translate into other things in the game, and so it's cool. I think esports is good if it comes from the community. I think games developed for the purpose of esports are kind of shit. Make a game to be fun and let the esports come second. Yeah, 100%, but would you, would you still, uh, would you still be against CIG adding in uh, tools for esports. 
whether that be whether that is uh yeah like more tools for for casters or um i mean one issue that is inevitable to come up because it comes up in every game that has a really heavy competitive scene is balancing for the purpose of of esports which i think is a bad idea you balance for the purpose of the greater player base but uh that you know that sort of stuff is relevant no as long as those tools don't get in the way of other features well they inevitably will though uh for them probably sorry actually they're not inevitably will if they have multi-use kind of like what we were talking about um with the reliant mako then i guess they wouldn't um but I, yeah in some situations i it, it would be required because it would mean someone in tech is working on a feature for that when they could be working on a feature for something else um it's a good discussion topic personally i think racing as it is now uh lo-fi being a derivative from racing is quite prohibitive it's actually similar to fighting games how do you get into playing a game you like when everybody you compete against are absolute veteran monsters um how familiar uh, how familiar are you oed with um xgr and the scr.gg community because the the vast majority of uh the the sort of play that comes from this is through time trials and both communities are incredibly good at uh, helping new players. So that doesn't really become an issue because you're not actually really versing those absolute veteran monsters. You're getting taught by them all the time. Like it's a really, really open community. Um, like I can see how that would be an issue, um, but I, I don't think that is the case at the moment. Uh, Muffin, from what I mean is I don't particularly want large amounts of dev time being put towards a spectator POV, especially for a game that hasn't been released yet. Okay. Tools for esports specifically, yes. Tools for purposes that meet the esports requirements. Hell no, I beg CIG at them. I want to be able to have a timer in my cockpit or Moby. I want to be able to make a spreadsheet that I can save and modify on my Moby. I don't want a racing uh, leaderboard tab on my Moby, Moby though. Yeah, that'll be interesting, actually, because um, they could go a ton of different ways with that. Having the it's it's a little off topic ish, but having the Moby Glass just have more utility in terms of like note taking app, right? Like I think it's one thing that I think Eve does really well is all of its like um, is all of its additional UI tools and being able to yeah have like a have a little have that. I believe Eve also has a timer, also has a browser. I don't know if it still has a browser, but it used to have a browser. So yeah, overall, you know, my message is uh, I'm I'm very hopeful that that esports does get a little bit more attention in Star Citizen, and I, th I think it inevitably will. I mean, the community is incredibly dedicated. All all of the guys that participated, the the PvP community is super dedicated. The racing community is super dedicated, and when you know you know next year we're going to have a big pvp resurgence probably but we're about to have a big pvp resurgence with cargo refactor and that's that's going to feed into into that a bit more there's there's some other things related to that that people are concerned about but not the topic of discussion for today um uh, and then you know like racing's about to get a bunch of new things in 318 that's that's going to push it even further and bring people more into this this competitive community so um like I'm excited in general, and I, d I just really hope that it, it can it can exceed my my expectations, you know. So yeah, having esports could be something that gets more people to take a look at Starsis and end up helping CIG make more money. Well, 100. Once again, there is no reason. Th there are only two reasons to develop anything, it, regardless of the product that you're making. There's literally only two that are relevant for making anything, and that is. Is it going to make me more money or is it going to make my current customers feel uh, more satisfied? There's the only, only really two reasons to do anything. So like, yeah, uh, of course, like if you're going to be supporting esports, it has to be for at least one of those two reasons. It's either going to make your current, your current customers more happy or it's going to bring new customers in. Um, Cause in both those situations, obviously that's, that's more profitable. So, um, and I think CIG are equipped to make that decision. Um, I would love them to release a racing ship even that allowed for mobile checkpoints a more precise uh, timing system. Well, we are... Mobile checkpoints would be great. I do like that we are... In 318, we are actually getting checkpoints. 
for the for the new racing matches and and they're actually bringing in those missions because even when they added in uh, i think it was like last week yeah no it's definitely we have been talking about more than racing we're just talking about racing right now <laughs> we're just we're just in a in a racing section um but yeah even last week when they added the hey we've added racing into the progress tracker uh, racing missions i was like oh they're just talking about arena commander and they're all like hey by the way new mission type um and it actually has checkpoints and also six new race maps and it's like it's okay awesome what the hell crazy and sort of yeah the 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 main point that i've been saying Stefan, is like the racing community is super dedicated i think dog fighting will be more popular uh in, in the long run uh, but I think the the racing stuff is sort of more cemented. Like the racing stuff is more refined. The dog fighting is more fun. You get what I mean? Welcome in, Lexi. Welcome in to Comlink. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, Dijon. So yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, just under an hour for that one for this Comlink. In general, like I said, I've sort of already reviewed myself, but I, I'm excited for the future of, of esports in Star Citizen. and I think it does have a future, and, and I'd like to see some some stuff from CRG assisting that more, although already what they're doing right now is fantastic. The stuff they're doing, just, just supporting the events in general has been really, really cool, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, made the, it's made the game feel it's made the game feel nicer and, and more closer and honestly it, it makes it feel a little more finished <laughs> so yeah so that's gonna be it for comlink this week talking all the things about esports if if you guys watching on youtube have anything that you you want to add or you want to talk about anything esports related maybe you've got something to say about the orgs maybe you've got something to say about you know where you'd like to see esports go in the future even event ideas you yourself might have that you think would be really really entertaining to watch make sure you put them in the comments below make sure you like the video if you if you found it cool and there's a couple of other com links that you can check out talking about a couple of different things we got one about citizen con we got two about the state of pvp um and everything we got announced for 318 in regards to that and uh and yeah, and make sure every single Monday at 1300 UTC, hop on over to twitch.tv slash Kronzy, hop into the chat here with all of these amazing people and, and have a conversation with us. And maybe if you're feeling up to it, pop on to the, the, the stream itself and we'll have a little bit of a conversation. Next week, most likely, we're going to be talking about IAE as we'll be a couple of days into it. Um, uh, there's, you know, the, the Corsair is going to be out. There's going to be a couple of vehicles to talk about what we think those vehicles might might have a place of in, in the future. My beanie is falling off my head again. <laughs> but other than that, thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you guys another time. Thank you. <laughs>